Hello friends, in this video I'm going to customize some Sylvanian Family's Calico Curtis toys to be based on Mothman, inspired by this screenshot of the prompt put into Dolly AI. I was like, that's doable, but I guess I didn't look too long at it because mine turned out completely different. Regardless, these little guys are going to be based on the Calisomia Promethea Silk Moth because my sibling headcanons that that's what species Mothman should be. We're going to use a couple different methods to color them and add details so that you can see how they turn out for if you want to recreate it or make your own customs. You may be thinking, how do you know how to customize them? Well, I've done it not once, not twice, but eight times when I made these evolutions out of rabbits because the ear shape fit better. So I've got experience at least enough to help you customize yours, especially in retrospect of this project. We're going to be using alcohol markers, acrylic paint, and fabric dye to change the color of their fur. If you have very specific colors that you want your custom to be, starting with white critters is going to work best. These honestly had leeway, but I had a bunch of white ones specifically for customizing. With older critters, you'll want to wash off any dirt and oils by very gently washing them with a toothbrush. You don't want to scrub off the flocking before you even start. Speaking of flocking, these customs... Uh, I wanted to take the ears off so that I could replace them with antennae, which is why I went with mice as a base and not rabbits. I intended to cut the plastic of the ear away from the head while leaving the layer of flocking that covers them. It's easier to take off the flocking layer because the glue that the factory uses essentially becomes like a skin layer that peels away. Unfortunately for me, the flocking here came off all at once in not a layer that peeled, even with a tiny bit of acetone, so my idea for covering up the holes that the ears left didn't work out at all. Fine for the male, which I made the bigger one to be a dad because his antenna is furrier, but is a real mess for the female daughter. I'll figure it out later. The tiny baby is going to be super easy to do. We're using alcohol markers for this, and I used a crawling rabbit as a base to make a little caterpillar. I have some isopropyl alcohol here to dampen the color and blend it where I need it. You can also use it to paint on the marker or mix colors that you don't have. I dab just a little bit of yellow on the tippy toes of the critter and dampen and push it up to where I want it to be. Just be careful when you do this with colors that you can't cover up. When you want to be able to get more precise coverage, you can just scribble out some ink on a palette and add some alcohol to that. The amount of either will affect its pigmentation, but you can use this to get the color you want, like how I wanted the green to be lighter. I want at least one stripe of fur to be uncolored, so I carefully tried to paint the ink on to allow that. Unfortunately, the fur really helps spread the ink and color with the capillary effect, so just be aware of that when you want super specific details in the coloring. But again, you can use that effect to get really nice gradient between colors like how I did on the head. The ears are going to be red to be one pair of the antennae things that the caterpillar has. If your alcohol marker is almost dried out, you can still get the pigment by adding alcohol to it and or trying to squeeze out whatever ink is left. Anyway, you have to be careful when you add colors that can't be covered up. Even just a tiny touch of alcohol to try and move the red ink spread it way more than I wanted it to. It's fine, but note that this is something that could happen with your project. I guess just don't underestimate how certain pigments will work. I 
I saved the tail of the other two critters to make the rest of the little antennae things that the caterpillar has. I colored the ones for the back in yellow and the ones for the head in red. I initially glued the back ones with hot glue, I think, but they fell off. I tried to put them all back on with super glue, but that was a bad idea because it made the pigment run into the rest of the critter, so don't do that. <laughs> Just use regular glue, not even like Fabrifix or Fabrotec because that definitely has acetone in it. For the daughter moth, we'll color it with acrylic paint and do it so the flocking remains tactile. Mix your color and test it on paper to make sure it's correct. You don't need nearly as much for this as you do for customizing something that is flat plastic. If you keep your critter away from water after you finish this project, then you don't have to worry about sealing it. But if you're still concerned, then you can add some sealant in with the paint. This Angelus finisher is specifically made for leather stuff, so it'll work fine for something like this. Otherwise, use a fabric medium with your paint to make it pliable. I don't suggest glue. When you get your paint mixture how you want it, you're going to want to add enough clean water to get it runny. Without watering it down, the paint will make the flocking stick and clump up and basically takes away half of why we're using these bases. That's also why it's important to get your color right on the first try. But again, be aware that the capillary effect will make it spread quickly, so still use lots of patience. For Father Mothman, we're going to use fabric dye. Going in here, I want to say that you should probably stay away from the ink method if you're going to use black. I used it to make this Umbreon custom and let me tell you about how bad the residue was. It got everywhere. It gets all over your hands when you handle it and it'll mess up other customs that you're working on. I even tried to leave those same kind of unpainted areas for the yellow rings, but the residue got on it to where it wouldn't work. On that note, you can see what happens to the flocking when you use too much paint, when you layer it. Pretty gross looking, I really don't like it. I made this in 2017 and kept it wrapped up in paper so that it didn't stain anything else. Five years later, it looks like there is barely any residue, but I did handle it a few months ago and it did still leave residue, so just be aware. So we're doing the dye method for him. I can only find this marker version, so I'll try that out. I'll test it on the foot just to make sure. It goes on a little less full than I expected, so I'll draw it in to be a little more opaque. I'll even show you how the ink behaves so that you can compare. The marker said to give it 24 hours before washing fabric that you use it with, so I'll give it that long and come back to see if it's dry. After a day, the fabric dye has even more residue than the ink. I would say it's because of the plastic underneath, but I think it was coming off of the flocking as well. I'll give it some more time to dry and come back later. In the meantime, I'll start planning out the wings. I'll sketch them out bigger than they need to be, and I'll sketch out the top wing separate from the bottom wing, since that's a pet peeve of mine. When the shape is fine, I'll cut out the plan and trace it again so I can plan both sides. You could do this on one piece, but the scrap paper that I was using had writing on the other side. Again, I'm basing these critters off Promethea silk moths, so that's the pattern I'll do. I'm going to use this plastic folder with a trace plan and cut out the shapes properly so that there's a left and right because this material has a side with texture. The color is going to be good for the male moth at least. I just want to get it so the wings aren't too asymmetrical. If you can, maybe consider sanding the plastic before you paint it, but I didn't do that. I just mix up matte paints for the colors that I need and paint on the patterns while I look at reference photos. Matte paint typically sticks better to plastic and I want that finish. I'm trying to keep the paint layers thin so that they don't chip off later. I did the brown wings off camera, but I don't use sealant on any of these. I didn't paint the big spot on any of the wings because I had an idea to cut out a hole on each of them and replace it with something striking. <sighs> so back to the coloring. The color on the feet on the dad is still coming off after a couple of days. In that time, I got proper dye for him, so I'll try that out. It's Jacquard Eye Dye Synthetic Dye, and I'm using it a little colder than recommended because I don't have a spare pot to keep it boiling. The color is still nice and pungent and inky. I'll leave him in there, I'll leave him in there for a few minutes. I also got a chocolate brown Ritz Synthetic Dye for a different project, but figured that it would leave the flocking feeling better than the paint would. I washed the daughter moth with soap and water and this is what she looks like between the paint and the dye here. She'll also go in for a few minutes. 
Actually, the chocolate brown color wasn't quite as dark as I needed it for the other project, so I mixed both of the dye mixtures and dipped her in that one as well for a tiny bit. Here they are after drying for a day or two, but the black is still leaving residue on my hands when I handle him. It's not as much as the alcohol ink would have left, but it's still enough to where I need to keep him in mind when I'm moving things around. To make these two even more moth manly, I'm going to replace their little black eyes with these red pins. The size is basically perfect, and they still look good even though they bug out a little more than the original eyes. I put a bend in the pin to help keep it from slipping out, and use Fabrifix glue to stick them in the head. Ideally, these wings will be somewhat poseable. I guess I'll just use regular wire for it, but bear in mind that posing it too much could wear away the wire and cause it to break. Also bear in mind the way that you're going to attach it. All things considered, I think I need to use hot glue for these. I'm not afraid to add it to the wire, but I really don't want it to rip the paint off of the wings. This takes me a while to do to get them the way that I want. Unlike the dad, the daughter's wings are going to have to be attached per side. I think I expected that. Oh well. While I have the hot glue ready, I'm going to put in her antenna in the hollow areas on her head. I'm going to use the standard Chanel pipe cleaner for the girl. I do the same thing for the guy, but I use an extra furry pipe cleaner to mimic how male moths have fluffier antenna. I can always trim the fur down later. These two are just about done, but I want to do one more thing to clean them up, and that's going to be adding flocking to the top of the wings, where the hot glue is. I'm going to use the spare paint and mix in some glue, I use Aileen's tacky glue, and paint that onto the hot glue to cover it up with both color and flocking. Leave the extra flocking where it is until the glue dries completely. If you want more coverage, you can glue in some more flocking later. I do the same thing for the dead, using a regular pipe cleaner's fuzz for most of the wings. I want to cover up this nasty looking bit on his back and I'm going to use the same fuzz from his antenna to do that. I considered giving both of them a furry collar with this length of flocking or even with yarn wefts, but I decided against it. However, I did want to better cover up the mess that I made on the girl's head since her antenna can't mask it, so I glue on some spare flocking there as well. When it's dry, I go over it with the same paint coloring method that I used earlier to get it to match better. I think they're just about done. or. Wait, um, the idea for the spots on the wings isn't going to work. I'll just paint on glossy black spots with metallic accents. Okay, now they're done. I think the baby turned out pretty good. I'm still a little disappointed by the way the color bled. The daughter turned out fine in the end, but the dye on the dad is still leaving residue. It doesn't seem like it'll take years for it to stop doing that, but be aware for when you display or store them. I know they don't have clothes, but that's something you'll have to decide on before you put on the wings if you make your own Sylvanian Mothman. I hope you still like mine and that I gave you some tips on how to customize your own calico critters. Thank you for watching!